This is just a quick video on how I use projects in Julia with VS Code. So, first of all, let me just open the Julia REPL. Now, the main thing with using projects in Julia is that it saves you a lot of hassle later on when, when versions of different packages change uh, and other such problems come up. It gives you a nice reproducible environment for all your code you can, that you can go back to and know it's going to work regardless of how packages have changed over time. So here we go, here's uh, my Julia uh, installation. And one of the first things I think it's worth pointing out is that it's good to keep your base environment pretty clean in terms of the numbers of packages you've got in there. So I've just got a few sort of key packages in there, the packages that I use all the time, uh, and very little else. So the, probably the most important one there is the package called Revise. That, now that's going to allow me to very quickly iterate on my code and just save my code and it automatically gets loaded into, into Julia. So the package I'm actually going to be using now is this one called Package Templates. And that allows me to very easily and quickly create new projects to work with. So I just keep a, a file with my basic template already set up there in, in Julia. So um, here's my basic template. And now package templates is a really useful um, package and you can add lots of different features. You can set it up to use uh, continuous integration with GitHub Actions. You get it to um, automatically build your documentation and do code coverage. I've got most of that disabled here at the moment, but the one thing that I do have enabled, which is quite important when you're doing uh, a project in Julia, is I've enabled man the manifest to be stored in, in Git. So storing the manifest of your project in Git means you've automatically storing the, all the versions that you're using for the different packages. So let me just uh, run run this uh, whole file. And there we go, it's running that code. And this has just created me that basic template. So now I can use that template to generate a new project. There we go, generating me that, that project. And it's putting me it in the directory that I've that I specified up here in the template. So you can put, you can change that to be whatever you want it to be. So it's, it's just takes a few moments because it's um, creating a new uh, Git environment for me uh, and just setting up the basic project structure. Okay, there we go. So now, that project is there, ready for me to open up and use. So let's do that now. Okay, so here I've just opened up that project that I've just created. Uh, and so it's it's pretty empty, but there are a few template files there ready to, for me to start working from. Now, the way I tend to use projects like this is I have two sets of code. I have the code that I continually reuse, so the functions that, that are the sort of building blocks of what I'm doing. And then I ha tend to have a set of scripts which I just use to generate data and just quickly um, get results using those functions that I've I always use. So here in the source folder, you can see that initial module that the package templates has created. And this is where I would put all those functions that I keep reusing. Uh, so here I'm just going to do a quick example with a differential equation. So what I'm going to put in is some, some code that I wrote previously, which simulates a duffing equation. Let me just paste that in there. So there we go. There's, there's the code for, for my duffing equation. So I'm going to want to use the ordinary diff eq package uh, as part of this project. So let me save that uh, and open up the Julia REPL. So there we go, start the REPL. Now you can notice straight away 
that Julia Environment has been set to my new project. So it's no longer V1.6 as it was before. So V1.6 is just my default um, environment. But now it's using this project environment. And the important thing about this is it's going to use this manifest.toml file to store all the version information for all the packages I now add to this project. So that means that whenever I come back to this project, it's using all the right versions of, of the packages. And so I don't need to worry if, if a package has been updated and it's no longer compatible, it doesn't matter. This code will use the old package. So let's let's start by adding the ordinary diffeq uh, package to this project. So let me add that in. Hopefully this will be relatively fast, but we will see. Okay, so it's updating the git, uh, the repository, or the registry rather. There we go, it's added, added the package, and I can see it there in my project. So it's now at version 5.51.1, and that's the version it will stay at, unless I explicitly tell it to be upgraded. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to start using the project that I've just created. So because I've put this in a module, I need to use this module to, to get access to its contents. So if I just do using my new project, because I'm in this environment, it automatically gives me access to this, this module, so I can just use it directly. Now I can see those things that I've put in there. So my stuffing type, which I'm going to use as my parameters for my ODE. Uh, and I can also get access to that right-hand side function. Now, because this is in a separate module, I have to prefix all these commands by this my new project. That's not ideal. What I'd usually do is just put in and export on here. So I'd export uh, duffing and I'd export the right hand side uh, of the of the differential equation. Now because I'm using revise, as soon as I save this uh, and start using the REPL again, it will automatically notice the changes in the file and import those changes. Let me just save that. So now if I go duffing it can see it there. It's taking a moment, so this is revise working. There we go. It's found that duffing uh, type. Okay, so the next thing I, I usually do is create a scratch file. So this is just a, a script where I'm just going to run odd snippets of code. So I might have my initialization section, which would have my using using um, my new project. There we go. I'm also going to do the using ordinary diff eq. So set up the problem. I'm just going to create my initial stuffing equation problem. And then solve it. So, go. Let's set up my problem equals OD problem. Okay. So this in this code, I'm actually using static arrays. So see, we hear s vector. So I've forgotten to add that to this to this package. I need to add in using static arrays. I also need to add that to this, this project. And again, it records the version. There we go. So just save that. And that will ensure this, this line 
works. So I also need it in here. So I have access to it outside of that module as well. So I'm going to solve this problem, give it an initial starting condition. Um, let's just start from 0, 0. And let's integrate the 0 and 100 time units. And I'm going to use that duffing equation as my parameters. And let's solve that. Rob, I just use a standard ordinary differential equation solver, PSIP 5. So now, because I've used these double hash symbols, I can execute blocks of code very, very quickly. So between these hash, uh, double hashes, I can just press Shift Enter and it will automatically run that block of code. There we go, just and you can see it's advancing from one block to the next. And I can solve the ODE. This will just take a moment because it's the first time I've run it. But there we go. I've got my, my solution there. Now, using this type of project structure, it becomes very easy to, to manipulate your, um, your code and just try out new ideas. Key thing is anything that gets changed in this new project automatically gets run by revise. Anything I use in this scratch file, I can just use shift enter or alt enter to run it as appropriate. So shift enter will run the cell, alt enter will run the, just the individual line. One final thing to note is that I can change which module my scratch code is actually running in. So by default, the ref pool uses the module main. And you can see that's down here, module main. You don't have to run your code in the module main. You can run it actually within this new project module. So sometimes you want to change your default module. So if I change it to my new project, now if I was to run this individual line, this p equals duffing, it's going to create that variable p inside the module. So I'm actually going to just change the name of it slightly so you can actually see the difference between the REPL. So I'm going to call this p2, the imaginate name. So if I run p2, it's there. It's there in the module now. So if I do my new project dot p2, there it is. So now I can use p2 again. I can just change this to p2 and run this block again. But now we've got the slight problem that ODE problem is not defined because I'm I'm using ordinary diff eq here but I'm not using it in my original project code, so I just need to add that in as well. So now I can just run that again, and Revise will immediately pick that up, and it'll work straight away, which is really nice. But if I now use P2, if I, instead of pressing Alt-Enter to, to look at that variable, I press Control-Enter. This is subtly different in that it sends this line to the REPL just directly. And the REPL always works with the main module. So if I do this, you can see P2 appears down here in the REPL, but P2 is not defined. If I press Alt Enter, it respects this module definition down here and it picks up the value of P2 correctly. So just be careful which module you're working in and also whether you're using control enter or alt enter. There we go. Hopefully that helps you uh, be a little bit more productive in how you use projects with Julia.